What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. Today what we're gonna go over is this haircut right here. I love this haircut, I know you guys like this style haircut as well, uh, but we have the disconnections in the front, a lot of really fun layering, and also some precision graduation in the back. So definitely think you guys are gonna dig this cut. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, I will give you the color formula at the end. This was a previously colored mannequin that we did with the Joyco hair color, so I'll talk about that as we go through it as well. So hope you guys enjoy it. Let's get started with our step-by-step. -step. Here we go. All right guys, so we're gonna start off by parting the mannequin on the left-hand side. This is really based on the side that your guest parts their hair. So if they part it on the right-hand side, then you can go ahead and part it on the right-hand side and just mirror what I'm doing. So start off on the left-hand side. Then we're gonna go back through mid-crown and then straight down center back. What that's gonna do is give me a nice symmetrical feeling in the very back portion around the nape of the neck, which will give me a easier way to stay consistent creating a symmetrical shape in the back of the head. Once I get my parting created in the back, then I just clip away the right-hand side, get it out of the way, and then I'm gonna work diagonal forward partings all the way up the head shape. So you can see that's about a half inch section that I take out of the nape of the neck. And then I'm gonna work that straight out from the head. So right at the occipital bone, the head kind of curves in. So this is very, uh, almost 90 degrees, maybe just a little bit below 90 degrees at the uh, fingertip portion of the section. So keep taking those partings, half inch partings, and I'm over directing them to the previous. So what we're doing is we're creating a traveling guide, which is gonna create a nice uh, balanced structure in the back of the head. So half inch parting, diagonal forward, over direct it to that previous section, um, and then work my way through. The reason I don't wanna to do too much over direction in the back is because I would be building up too much weight in the front. So we do have a forward feel to this haircut. You saw all that texture and length in the front of the haircut. But that doesn't mean that you have to do over direction to create that. We're actually gonna create it using disconnection, which is gonna be a lot lighter than going in and over directing everything to the front to try to create the same exact look. So I'm working my way all the way up to behind the ear. You could see that nice graduation building up. We're utilizing the head shape to change the angle. So my finger angle stays the same, but because we're working up the head shape, the actual uh, elevation of the haircut changes and builds up that weight around the occipital bone, gives it a nice shape. Now what I'm gonna do is break up the sides of the haircut. Now this was a previously cut uh, mannequin that we did before. So it has a layered feel to the top of the haircut. So it's nice and light. So if somebody had thicker hair, I'd probably break this up into more sections, but because it's nice and skinny, I can do it in a couple. So I just comb it straight down using the wide teeth of my comb, keeping it nice and natural. And then I go through and just freehand cut all the way to where I want that disconnection to start. So I'm leaving that hair for later, and we talk about this a lot in all these different videos that we do. We wanna leave some hair that we can create uh, different things with later. So we keep that weight on there, keep that disconnection. Now I'm gonna work the opposite side. Finger angle stays the same, be working parallel from the occipital bone down to the nape and using the wide teeth of the comb and working with a traveling guide. It's even more important on this side of the haircut because of the fact that this is the heavy side. So all the weight is gonna be traveling to this side to stay nice and consistent. Don't over direct it too far. If you over direct it too far, you'll get too much weight pushed to the uh, right hand side of the head. Now you'll notice I hold my scissor a little bit different. A lot of times um, you're looking for comfort when you're cutting hair. If I twist my wrist a certain way when I'm trying to cut um, close to the nape of the neck, my hand gets in the way, uh, it kind of bounces off of the neck. So I just flip the scissor, I put my thumb in the other direction, cuts the hair exactly the same. So if you're comfortable cutting it the other way, you don't have to cut it like that. But you can see once I got away from the nape, now I go back to cutting regular. It's just a comfort thing for me, it keeps me consistent. So working my way through, all the way to behind the ear, still working those diagonal forward sections. You can see that my over direction is not coming to the back middle, uh, but what I am doing is following the head shape up. So I'm not over directing that hair over towards the ear either. What I wanted to do is keep it nice and light. So I'll start uh, with my elevation low, work my way up, and I'll follow that guideline that goes all the way up into that crown area, so my elevation will shift a little bit because I wanna keep it nice and light. This is something I talk about in haircutting a lot. You don't have to keep consistently cutting in one spot. 
you can move throughout the haircut as long as you understand why you're doing it. I'm moving because I want it to be nice and light around the crown, and I don't want to build up a ton of weight uh, behind the right ear. So we start off cutting. Uh, you can see the angle that we're holding the hair. Then I shift. I raise my hand up a little bit, keeps it nice and light, and then I work my way towards the top, and I do a little bit of point cutting even into that uh, to lighten it up that way. So we're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, the same thing we did on the left-hand side. Take a horizontal uh, parting across, use the wide teeth of our comb, and then freehand cut to where we want that disconnection to be. Same thing, we'll do one more section. If you can't see through this, then you should definitely break it up. So if you have thicker hair, remember, break that up into multiple sections. Now we're going to go in with our Cloud9 Blowout Serum. This is from Bricado. It's one of, you know, one of my favorite products for smoothing hair. I just throw it in there. It's got a nice shine to it. You'll see how much shine builds up on the hair. Nice medium hold. What I like to do with dry hair cutting is, is kind of make it feel like there's nothing in the hair, but have it nice and shiny and smooth. So you're going to see those disconnections come to life. You're also going to see a buildup of weight around those disconnections because we haven't elevated the hair yet. We're going to elevate the hair when we get into the dry cutting portion. You're also going to see the shape come to life as well. So just going through blow drying, doing some flat wrapping, also some leafing. Leafing is when you kind of grab the hair with the brush just like you're seeing me do now and lift the hair up. Gives it a little bit of volume at the base but also pulls tension onto the hair which helps smooth out that base to mid shaft. Anytime you're flat wrapping the hair or you're um, leafing the hair, you're focused on the base and the mid shaft. The ends you'll get with the flat iron, which is what we're going to go in and do next. So my focus is getting the shine to the base, getting the lift where I want it, and then now we're going to go in with our Bricado Vibra Straight Iron. This is the iron uh, I use all the time. It vibrates as it smooths, so what it does is causes less friction, so it's less damage, also has a smoother kind of pass-through on the hair, and kind of works. So if you think about it, as it's vibrating, it's separating the hair. It helps smooth it faster as well. So you're going to see as I'm smoothing the hair out here, I'm mostly focused mid shaft to ends. Like I said in the blow dry, we focus the blow dry on the base to mid shaft. We go mid shaft to ends with the iron, just saves us on our work. So keeping it nice and polished in both ways, but also creating less damage for the hair because we're not ironing everything scalp to ends every time. Little trick I like to do here with the bang area, over directing it the opposite direction. She's going to wear it, give it a little bit of a bend. So when she pushes it over to the other side, it gives it a little kick and flip to it. Uh, it lays really nice. You can see how soft it lays right wrapping around the face there. So now what we're going to do is we're going to work on that disconnection and the dry cutting portion. So you can see that extra weight sitting there. That's because we haven't elevated the, the left hand side of the head yet. So what I do is I go through and I cut my precision line in the back. All my lines are usually done with the dry detail work. So that's why you want to make sure you get the hair nice and smooth the way you want it. And I go through and I detail the sides, cut those nice uh, hard lines in the shape, really makes the shape stand out. It's all these finishing touches that make your haircut stand out to your guests. So just going through finishing the outer perimeter of the haircut, you can still see those disconnections. We're going to cut into those now. So if you've been wondering and sitting on the edge of your seat, is he going to leave that there? No, we're not. We're going to go in and connect it to the haircut. So I go through. This is a tease cutting technique that I've shown you guys a lot. If you just started following, welcome. Uh, I have lots of videos on how to do this technique, but it's a half close with the scissor, and it helps work out any weight within a dry cut. Creates a lot of shattered kind of feel and texture within the haircut as well. So we go through that disconnected portion that I did not elevate. I wanna go through and just add some light layers to it. And then I'm gonna go through and grab that entire disconnection and decide, pinch it where I really want that hair to end and then finish it with a little bit of slide cutting. All of that is very similar techniques. It's half closing the scissor, whether you're sliding down the hair shaft or you're tease cutting. The tease cutting is pushing the scissor in, half closing, and then releasing it pushing it in, half closing, and releasing it. Slide cutting is just sliding down and half closing on it as you work. So I also told you guys I would share with you the color formula. So the base of this color, so we pre-lightened, uh, did some balayage all over the entire head uh, and painted basically from mid shaft to ends. And then I did the base ruby red Joyco uh, color intensity with a little bit of black pearl. And then the ends is a light pink 
uh, with the rose. So that's our end result, guys. Hope you liked it. All right, guys, like always, if you like this haircut, then hit the like button, hit the share button, share this video with all of your friends out there. Also, if you're not a hairdresser and you're looking for a salon, remember we have the hairsaloncom website where FSE partner salons are all on there. You could type in your zip code and find the closest salon near you. And if you're a stylist or salon owner and you're looking to get put on the FSE partner salon program, you get a class every single month online. You also get added to our secret Facebook group and put on the FSE Salon Locator website so that people that watch these videos can find your salon and get these hairstyles. So make sure you check out all the links for everything that I've used in the video and also more information on finding a salon or becoming part of our FSE Partner Salon program. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks. And guys, remember, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button below because you could win this Vibrastrate iron. Good luck. Let me know in the comments below if you've subscribed. Thanks.